Concept art is a form of visual art that is mainly used to convey an idea or a vision in films, video games, or animations. It acts as a bridge between the imagination and the practical steps of production by sketching a few initial concepts and sometimes taking from different angles, especially for characters and props. Then comes the painting process, in addition to some refining and polishing, by then you would have a clear concept art. But is it as simple as that? Definitely not. So to break things down, we will be starting off with a few things you need to know. I also wanted to let you guys know that the Blender Market is having right now its annual spring sale. So if you want to get items at a lower price, this is your chance to do so. If you don't know where to start, you can check the description of this video down below where I chose and organized for you the best add-ons and courses. In the 1930s, Walt Disney Animation Studios first pioneered the term through the extended efforts of Gustav Tangren. Gustav was a Swedish-American illustrator that first got his scholarship in 1913 to study painting at Valand Academy in Gothenburg, Sweden. He worked on illustrating popular Swedish folklore and fairy tales. After his first exhibition in 1920, Gustav immigrated to the US and kept working on a large number of children's books. That is, until the Great Depression, when Walt Disney Productions hired him to work as a chief illustrator. He later worked on many iconic titles during the golden age of American animation, such as Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, Bambi, Pinocchio, and many others. Little did Gustav know that he actually was contributing to defining an entire field of visual arts and leading an art style of his own for generations to come. Concept artwork is the stepping stone for any production because it defines how ideas visually look like for artists. It also acts as a visual problem-solving process throughout the entire production. Concept artists are the first ones to initiate any project. Because huge changes are cheaper to explore with quick drawings and sketches, it is also very hard and frustrating to make changes on polished art. This makes concept artists immune to being precious about their work by keeping in mind that their work could vastly change at any given moment. Concept art is a necessity, and this is the case for multiple productions like movies, animations, and of course video games. Environment concept art is quite crucial for the overall film or video game project because it defines and helps visualize the world of the story and how the audience perceives the whole thing. Basically, it sets the whole mood of the animation, film, or video game that people are consuming. Concept artists are required to have keen eyes on architectural design, so it seamlessly blends with the atmosphere because shape language plays a big role in how the viewer or the player feels. They also have to be excellent at compositing the layers and elements of the scene, and of course, pick the right angles and perspective to show the required details. For instance, we have Trent Kanyoga, a famous concept artist who previously worked on many big video game projects and companies such as Blizzard Entertainment, which is one of the most controversial game companies. Trent played a massive role in shaping up the look of League of Legends' Bloody Toxic Arena Summoner's Rift. He was tasked to design the look of the map, as we can see the iteration he made for the concept behind it. Initially, artists grab a bunch of coherent reference images, and for big animation and video game titles, they go to the next step by traveling and going to actual locations, whether it be mountains, farms, woods, or cities, just to get a grasp of the vibe and feel that those places offer. Basically, they need to be immersed in those worlds in order to create what they are aiming for. I recommend you guys take a look at the environment concept art process, especially time-lapse videos, because it is a breeze. It will give you an idea of how to make those artworks, even sometimes when it is technical but it is fun. One of the most popular subfields in concept art is character design, where artists work on their concepts based on the director's or writer's description derived from personality traits, quirks, character background, or lore. And sometimes, concept artists are given absolute freedom to generate a wide variety of iterations of character designs, only to gradually select certain parts and traits of each iteration and eventually narrow down these models into the final concept. A good character concept design is not defined by its complexity, but rather by its ability to portray the best fitting story for the character. Even costumes or the way characters dress are designed to highlight key elements of the character's personality, motives, and abilities. As a whole, character concept design branches into two big Fs, either functional or fantasy-oriented types. 
As an artist, you can highlight your character concept using realistic designs that show a good degree of practicality when it comes to clothes, weapons, movement, and so on. We can see this in characters such as Joel from The Last of Us or Lara from the Tomb Raider series for its appearance. We also have less functional character design, sometimes wild designs such as creators from God of War or Link from the Legend of Zelda series. For this specific category, you definitely need your sketchbook everywhere you go. The creation of assets and props such as weapons, environment props, and furniture require research and knowledge which is essential for this task because an asset concept artist is often required to create props of different eras, different styles, and different aesthetics. Observation and absorption are also vital elements to be taken into consideration because artists must draw inspiration from real things and from different cultures and civilizations. History is a great teacher, but so is the real world. So artists often go to museums and travel to certain places, all for the sake of observing while keeping their precious sketchbooks at hand. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.